What's up guys, I'm Brad Rodriguez from Fix This, Build That, and today I'm talking keyless deadbolts. I'm gonna show you how I installed this one here from Schlage, I'm gonna answer the top five questions I got about it, and I'm gonna show you why having a tube of lipstick is gonna help you during install. Stay tuned, I'll show you exactly how I did it. I've partnered with Home Depot to check out some smart home devices this year, and I've been waiting on this keyless deadbolt to arrive for a while. The one I'm installing is the Schlage Connect touchscreen deadbolt with alarm. I'm going to show you the install I went through and talk through some of the features on the deadbolt as I go before I answer the top five questions. The install is pretty similar to most other deadbolts and it only requires a screwdriver, a drill, and maybe a chisel if you have some fitment issues, which I did. I started off by removing the old lock and trying to install the Schlage deadbolt in its place. Now right off the bat I had a small fitment issue on the mounting plate, it was a bit too big. So to expand the recess a little, I traced the outline of the plate and chiseled away the material until it fit. I secured it with the mounting screws and then tested the deadbolt fit in my current setup. Unfortunately, when I put the lock in here, it does not fit like it should. So when I go to test it, the lock does not actually go into the hole where it should. So here's a little trick that I learned using some lipstick. I'm gonna open this up, I'm gonna extend the lock out. Then I'm going to use some red lipstick. This is actually from Halloween from my daughter. And we're going to paint this where I think it's hitting. So along here on the bottom, as well as the sides. Then we're going to put it into the door lock and it's going to show us where it's hitting. We're going to put it in there. I'm going to just going to do it a few times. And that lipstick now should be transferred. Let's see what it looks like. So you can see the red right there. That is the lipstick. So I need to take some off of that bottom plate right there. All right, it removed a good deal down there, right where all the lipstick was. Let's see how it does. So this is really important. I'll talk about it in the top five questions, but a good fit here is extremely important. The reinforcement plate for the deadbolt didn't fit the current opening either, so I widened it the same way as before with my drill and a chisel. The strike plate is actually a bit thicker, so I'm gonna go ahead and take some more material off this as well to make sure that this fits nice and flush. And the reinforcement plate that goes under the strike plate is a major upgrade versus the lock that I was using before. So as you saw, the only thing my prior deadbolt had was a strike plate and some smaller screws. Now the Schlage lock has this reinforcement plate that goes under the strike plate and it's anchored by these large reinforcement screws. The standard strike plate goes on top of that once it's installed. So if you use those extra long reinforcement screws, you can keep the BHMA rating of a grade one. And basically what that's saying is that now this is all connected to the frame of the door. Instead of just that little strike plate and a little one inch screw, you've got that two and a half inch screw going all the way in and it helps secure the entire door. So it's great if you wanna have extra security on your front door. Next, I was ready for the touchscreen keypad to be installed. The keypad is fingerprint resistant and backlit. And it has a communication and power wire that feeds through to the inside of the door. And the inside unit is the brains of the operation and it houses the battery power supply, the motherboard, and the speaker for the alarm. The keypad is held in place by a mounting plate on the inside and the indoor unit is screwed onto this as well. The only hookups made are just the communication wire and installing the batteries into the unit. And with that, the lock is ready to go and I initialized it using the programming code. I also installed this matching handle set, which is just plug and play like any normal knob, very easy to install. The lock comes with two default codes, but new codes can be added and removed manually. There are several features that can be toggled on and off manually on the keypad, including changing the length of the passcode to either four, five, or six digits, turning the keypad beeping on or off, and setting a vacation mode where all codes will be denied. All right, now let's get into the top five questions. I put out on social media that I was gonna be doing this install and I asked folks, what do they wanna hear about? And here's what they had to say. The first one was battery life. Got a ton of questions around battery life about how long it lasts and when am I gonna to have to replace the batteries? So when I looked in the manual, the manual says about 12 months that you should get. But I looked further on some reviews online and I saw anywhere from nine to 15 months. So the biggest thing that drains your battery quickly is if that lock is not fitting properly. Like I showed you in install, you wanna make sure that it is not scraping the side because that will drain your battery much, much faster. So a close second to that, the next question is, what happens when the battery dies? What if that dies and I'm stuck outside? Am I gonna be locked out? 
Well, no, of course not. That's why they have the override key. So you can see here, you can just use it just like any other lock and that will let you in. You can replace the batteries once you get inside. So the next question I got was all about wireless capability. What can I do? Can this thing connect wirelessly? Is it Bluetooth? Is it Wi-Fi? What is it? The lock works with Z-Wave technology, and that's a wireless communication for a lot of smart home devices that works with the hub. I've got the Wink 2 hub, which is compatible with the device here, so that's what I've been talking about. So this gives you a lot more functionality. You can add and remove codes straight from the application. You can also do all those other functionalities between vacation mode, turning the beeps on and off, and also the activity log. So if user codes are being entered, you've got a log of that, that you know when they're coming, and you know that they've entered that code in there. But one of the coolest things that I think is the robot function. You can set this up so that if a certain user code is entered, that it will set off other things in the house. It will either turn on some lights or it can send you a notification. I've got it set up here that if Elaine enters the house, it's gonna send me a notification on my app and it's also gonna turn on the lights that are connected to the smart home. So those are some great features that if you really hook it up to a hub, you're gonna get a ton more functionality out of the whole entire lock system. All right, the next question I had is what about break-ins? How does this thing help to stop break-ins and is it as good as a normal deadbolt? Well, there are a few things during install you saw that I used those extra long reinforcement screws. I think they're about two and a half inches. Uh, when you put those in there, that allows you to have the grade one certification from the BHMA, which is basically just saying that this is the highest level of security and functionality that you can get out of a deadbolt. Now, as far as outside, if people are coming in and trying to override the codes manually, the nice thing is, if you get four wrong codes in a row, it will sound an alarm. There's an alarm feature. You're gonna hear that inside. If you're sleeping, it'll wake you up. One thing though that I really would recommend is that you're changing your passwords. And if you're giving those out, you can delete those in the app. So you're giving one-time passwords to people who only need it for a certain amount of time. And that you're changing your own passwords from time to time as well. All right, and the question I got the most is, can it be hacked? We all know that with enough time and energy and resources, anything can be hacked. So is it foolproof 100%? No, it is not. And the nice thing about this system and other systems like it is that it works on the secure connection of that Z-Wave and in your hub. So everything is encrypted. It's gonna be extremely hard to do. And more than likely, they're not gonna be coming after your house. They're gonna be going after government secrets, if you know what I mean. If you're comfortable enough ordering things online and using smart home technology, then it's gonna fall all along those same lines. Hey, if you want to see another great video, I've got one queued up for you right over there. You can go check it out. I hope I answered your questions. I know those were the most popular questions that I had. If you have other questions, hit me below in the comments and let me know, and I'll make sure to get to them. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, I'd love to have you as part of the team. And until next time, guys, get out there and build something awesome.